Welcome to the ITDVDs.com YouTube channel. This is just a sample of the training available at ITDVDs.com. If you would like to see complete training, please go to ITDVDs.com. Now let's begin the sample. Now let's create a second domain controller for our domain ITDVDs.local. I'm on a server called DC02 and it's just a basic build just like our first domain controller was. Uh, it's Windows 2008 R2, computer's name is DC02, and it's still part of a work group. For the second domain controller, it's going to be slightly different. We're going to go ahead and make it a member of the domain, and then we're going to run DC Promo. So if we take a look at my network connections, it's going to right-click on my network adapter and go to Properties, Highlight IP Version 4. You can see it has a static IP address, and that's important because this will be a domain controller. But the preferred DNS server is going to be the DC01 server that we made our first domain controller. And when we went through DC Promo, we also installed DNS. So that's also a DNS server. So it's .161, and then this server, .162, is going to be our alternate DNS server. We don't have DNS installed yet. We'll go ahead and do that when we run DC Promo. And I've also given it an TCP IP version 6 static IP address as well and the preferred DNS server this is the IP version 6 address of DC01 which was our first domain controller so go ahead and click OK close and I'm gonna go to the start menu right click on computer go to properties and we're gonna click on change settings click on change and we're gonna make this a member of our domain itdvds.local click OK type in the credentials that have permission to add this computer to the domain. I'm going to use my administrator ITDVDs account. Click OK. And it says welcome to the ITDVDs.local domain. So I'll go ahead and click OK. Now I'm going to have to reboot this server. So I'll go ahead and do that now. All right, our server's been rebooted. So let's go right-click on computer, go to properties. And we can see that it is a member of the itdvds.local domain. So let's open up our server manager. And we'll go to roles. Right-click on roles and click add roles. Click next to the splash screen. And again, we're going to go ahead and check the box for Active Directory Domain Services. We're going to need to install .NET Framework 3.5.1, so I'll go ahead and click to add the required features. Click Next, Next again, and Install. Okay, the installation was successful. We can always click on this link to launch DC Promo, or click Close, go to the Start menu, and just type in DC Promo. I'll go ahead and click on it, and I'm going to click Next and next again this time we're gonna select existing forest because we're adding a domain controller to an existing forest in domain and we'll select the option add a domain controller to an existing domain so I'll go ahead and click next and it's gonna be itdvds.local it auto filled it with the domain that I'm a member of and right now I just happen to be logged on with the local administrator account of this server and that account, of course, does not have permissions to make this server a domain controller. So I actually need to specify alternate credentials. I can go ahead and do that now. Now, I could be logged in with a domain user account that had permissions to make this server a domain controller. But I'll go ahead and type in my credentials. Click OK. And as far as permissions goes, you do need to be a domain admin to add a domain controller to the domain. So go ahead and click Next. And we're going to select our only domain, which is also a forest root domain because it's our first domain in the forest. So I'll go ahead and click Next. And if we had multiple sites, we could select which site we want to add this domain controller to. We're going to talk about sites in a little bit. So I'll go ahead and click Next. Now we can select whether or not we want to make this domain controller a DNS server. 
We don't necessarily have to, but it's just our second domain controller, so most likely we're going to want to install DNS so we have some kind of redundancy. Also, we can select whether or not we want to make this server a global catalog server. Now, the first domain controller we installed when we created our forest and domain was a global catalog server. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this box and not make this particular domain controller a global catalog server. We could also make it a read-only domain controller. We'll talk about that later on. So I'll go ahead and click Next. And we get a nice little warning here about the infrastructure master role and how since we installed our first domain controller, it was a global catalog server as well. It had to be. Therefore, it also had the infrastructure master role and all the other operations master's roles. Well, it, it's letting us know that it's not a good idea to have the infrastructure master role be on a domain controller that's also a global catalog server. And since I uncheck this box, so that this particular domain controller will not be a global catalog server, it lets me know, hey, you should probably transfer the role now, or I can transfer it later if I'd like manually. And we'll see how to do that a little bit later on. I'm going to go ahead and transfer it now. So I'll just click on this button. And it also let me know that the delegation for this DNS server could not be created because .local is the top-level domain, and there is no .local DNS server. So I'll go ahead and click Yes to continue. And again, same as our first domain controller, uh, for performance reasons, we can put each of these database log files and sysvol folders on different physical hard drives that will give us better performance. I'm just going to leave them on the same drive, leave them in the default location. So I'll go ahead and click Next. We'll type in our directory services restore mode administrator account password. So I'll go ahead and click Next, and we get our summary here. Click Next, and you can see now it's actually replicating information from our first domain controller. And depending on our, our, our environment, that can take quite some time. If we have a lot of users, a lot of groups, a lot of computers, the replication portion of this can take a while. And that's a reason why we may want to do this after hours so it doesn't generate a lot of replication traffic, use up a lot of resources on our domain controllers. Okay, the installation completed, so I'll go ahead and click Finish. And now we have two domain controllers in our environment and two DNS servers. So I'll go ahead and reboot this server. So now I'm over on DC01, which is our original domain controller, our first one. And since we have two DNS servers now, it's normally a good idea to add that second domain controller to your DNS server list. So I'm going to go over to IP version 4, and I'm going to add 192.168.6.162, which is DC02. I'll make that the alternate DNS server for, D for DC01. And now I'm on DC02, and let's... Open up our network configuration here. Go to our adapter settings. Right click, go to properties, TCP IP version 4, properties, and we're actually going to switch these two around. So we're going to make .162, which is this server, the primary, and .161, the alternate, because it's normally a good idea to have your primary be itself if it's a DNS server. So I'll go ahead and click OK and close. And if we're using IP version 6, we'd also want to do that with our IP version 6 addresses.